Hello everyone, thank you for attending my talk. My name is Andy Hakim and uh, first of all I would like to thank the organizing committee for having me in this conference and today I would like to give a talk related with the geochemical dispersion of metal and rare earth elements in water and soil in the tailing storage facility in central Kalimantan, Indonesia. This contribution can be achieved by the uh, collaboration between the Institute of Technology Bandung or ITB and Gold Silver Mining Company which is PT Kasongan Bumi Kensana. First of all, I would like to introduce you to the um, mining area that is located in the central Kalimantan of Indonesia. We know that the closure of the telling storage facility may affect the emergence of the geochemical dispersion. Therefore, we study the behavior of the metals and therefore we collected the soil samples, we collected the tailings, uh, and then uh, we also evaluated the uh, surface and uh, groundwater uh, samples and we study the mineralogy and the stable isotopes of the uh, above uh, samples. The aims of this study, we would like to study the uh, weathering processes which may uh, produce a reactive mineral phases and the geochemical, the geochemical dispersion and oxidation processes that occurs during the closure of the minings starting from 2015 up to now. In order to study the mineralogy and geochemistry in this studied area, we collected samples in 2019 and 2020. The samples including groundwater, surface water, seepage, pore water as well as the TSF. We also collected solid samples including soil, sediments, tailings, and rock samples. The above samples are studied using the optical and electron microscopy, rare earth elements and dissolve of dissolved water and solid samples using ICPMS, stable isotope of deuterium and oxygen. We also studied the anion and cation of the water samples. We perform X-ray diffraction and X-ray flow sense, and we also conducted geochemical modeling using Frixi. As you can see in the right hand side, there is an excavator that I used to uh, excavate the uh, tailing storage facilities. And after the excavation, we can see that several layers are oxidized, but uh, the fresh tailing are not oxidized. As you can see here, the oxidized layer are colored in brown, but the fresh tailing has a gray color. We focus on two areas. The first is the TSF mira that is located here, and the second one on the TSF labor. The TSF mira represents area that is being mined until 2015, and it represents the historic telling storage facilities, while the second one, the TSF labor, represents the active telling storage facility. So we can compare the mineralogy in the historic area and the mineralogy in the active area. We also divided the area into four types. The zone A represents the undisturbed area. The zone B is the historic telling storage facility, whereas the zone C is the active telling storage facility. And the last is zone D is the active mine that is located mostly in the western part of the uh, area. First of all, I would like to give you an idea about the hydrothermal alteration and the uh, optical petrography of the samples. Most of the area is dominated by the quartz and calcite veins and the host rock are uh, including here is the trehyte and then mafic dike, doleritic dike and sometimes we also find the uh, sericite alteration and uh, adularia sericite alteration. If we take a look into the ore minerals, we can see the several uh, sulfides minerals, including pyrite, galena, 
chalcopyrite boronite and the ore minerals the precious metals is native silver and native gold uh, and also electrum and here we can see that most of the golds are relatively small less than 25 micrometers whereas the silver is relatively quartz green up to 100 micrometers the uh, area is processed using the CN addition and therefore the addition of the cyanide is relatively intense here you can see the mineralogy of the mine tailings if we take a look on the fresh tailings that is collected in the TSF labor most of the uh, uh, minerals are quartz and also calcite that is colored in green this composition is relatively different if we compare the mine tailings of the uh, fresh tailings and uh, the mineralogy of the historic tailings the weathered and oxidized samples of historic tsf mainly consists of quartz with minor calcite however we can see here the potassium silicate potassium feldspar is relatively uh, dominant in these samples uh, as well as the albite in the right hand side you can see that some of the samples are already altered to form the goethite and also secondary iron bearing minerals we further classify the samples with, uh, in historic and fresh uh, tailings using the sulfide alteration in the index in this diagram you can see that uh, the sulfide alteration index is, diff is uh, classified from 0 up to 10 the 10 meaning that the weathering processes is relatively extensive in contrast the 0 up to 1 uh, shows that only few grains of pyrite are weakly altered in this diagram we can see that in the uh, fresh tailings the sulfide alteration index are typically lower than 4 however in the uh, historic areas the sulfide alteration indices is relatively high up to 10 it can be inferred that the weathering processes causing the breakdown of the sulfide minerals and creating the iron oxide minerals in this slide you can see the geochemical data of soil rock and sediment samples from the tailing storage facility and the surrounding uh, surrounding areas the total red earth elements are up to 212 milligram per kilograms soil shows large variation of arsenic manganese and nickel and if we take a look out, uh, into the metals arsenic is the main contaminant in in mira that exceed the Canadian environmental standards and there are relatively similar patterns of the uh, rock and soils as well as the sediment samples there are some positive European anomalies detected in all samples so in this slide you see the surface water and groundwater data and you can see here there are two clusters the first one the green one represent the surface water and the second one is the groundwater this data is supported by the stable isotope data you can see here the surface water has a different cluster if we compare it with the groundwater we can uh, suggest that there is no mixing between surface water into the groundwater and the interaction of the uh, area above the surface border are mainly controlled by the uh, surface border in this slide you can see the rare earth elements patterns of the water samples collected during the rainy season and summer season as you can see here in summer season the uh, total concentration of rare earth elements 
in dissolved uh, water is relatively high. It can be inferred that the rise and fall of groundwater levels can cause the dissolution of metal and clay minerals, which will lead to an, to an enrichment of the concentration of metal and earth elements during the summer season. Under reduced condition, oxygen deprivation and groundwater level drops, which can, which can uh, dissolve the ions and metals. Therefore, the concentration of dissolved metals will decrease. We further make a geochemical modeling using Frixi, and we use three different scenarios. The first scenario is the direct precipitation, and the second is the uh, mixing between the rainwater and the uh, surface and groundwater. And the third scenario is the interaction between minerals and uh, rainwater as well as the uh, groundwater and surface water. The result shows that Goethite will be uh, precipitate in all scenarios. Calcite will occur only in the first and second scenarios. In the third scenarios, uh, there will be a chemical equilibrium between the uh, water and also with the minerals. Several uh, minerals, including bohemite, will be will precipitate. And the occurrence of uh, the, the all scenarios will give us information that the pH are relatively neutral, started from 7.7 .7 up to 9.7. The result shows that the historic tailings as well as the fresh tailings will form the neutral pH in the future. From this study, we can conclude that multi-year sample collection under various field conditions provided insights into the mineralogical and geochemical changes. Second, the surface water has a different composition from groundwater. The third, geochemical, geochemical modeling indicate that the final pH of surface water will be natural. And we can uh, make a difference between the fresh tailings and historic tailings. The oxidation of uh, sulfides are only observed in the uh, historic tailings, and there are shallow water covers which uh, limit the uh, existence of oxygen and pirate oxidation. And therefore, the shallow water covers are relatively uh, successful to uh, prevent the oxygen and pyrite oxidation. Therefore, the tailings at the bottom of the pond will remain stable. Sulfate in acid mine drainage will not form. Thank you for your attention and have a nice day.